Everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I want to show you how you can absolutely paint this gorgeous peacock feathers eye. This is a really beginner, all level friendly painting. It's a great first painting. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. I explain every color mix, every technique, and every tool I use in real time, and John helps me with that by making sure the cameras are pointing at what I'm demonstrating. This lesson is something like maybe you love peacocks and you decided you want to see if you could paint one, which you absolutely can. Um, but maybe you're part of the beginner acrylic painting course that I've got. So you can do this as its own lesson or you can be doing this as part of the acrylic painting course. I want to congratulate you on either one and remind you that you can do this. And this is supposed to be fun and easy. And I'm going to try to help make sure that it stays that way for you. So just... Take a deep breath and realize we're going to do some colorings with our paints. Let's go on and begin with step one. So the first step of this is to lay out the basic zones of the peacock eye, which is really kind of a little diamond shape here and a little feather bone coming off there. Now you can do this with chalk, right? So you could come up here with some chalk and I'm coming about a finger, finger and a half over, about a third of the canvas up and bringing this round. The only thing about the chalk that has been hard is that you guys at home have a little trouble seeing it. So I'm also going to outline this in paint so that you can see it. All right. We're going to outline this paint. I'm going to take a number four round. I'm going to get it slightly wet and just get some blue to start with. So this will really help you see where the lines are. So again, one and a half, two fingers over. I'm going to make a little fine line coming over this way and up a little bit. A little bit like a leaf. Right about here, we're going to come back down, curve around, heading towards this corner. See that right there? Yeah. Just the beginning of a little bit of the peacock leaf. If you get a little too much going, like I feel like I have a little too much here on the side, look, I can kind of sketch in. And because I'm doing uh, blue on the outside, I'm going to get a little white brush and soften this before it dries completely because I don't want it to leave a hard line. I can have a little bit of a one, but I want kind of a soft line to start with. That's looking pretty good. Now inside the eye, we have another little shape kind of going on. I've got to leave room for orange. And I'm going to come down and down because there's a little bit of aqua that will also come in here. And I just bring that around. And that is that part of the center. Fun how we get the center of a peacock's eye. So we go down. Yeah. A little sort of diamond shape up. And again, these are loose and sketchy. There we go. So that sort of lets us know where those lines are. There's a bright, deep blue center, an aqua outer and then some orange and golds around. The outside of this is the long part of the feathers. And so when we come back, we're gonna paint the first layer of the background in. So this next part is getting in the background. I'm gonna take my bright brush. This brush is about an inch in width. So uh, while it is a number 10 black pearl, what you're looking for is a bright brush that's about this wide. And bright just means a shorter length out on those filaments. If you want to know more about that, we actually had a whole primer video about this. I'm going to come here on the wide and make a flowing brush stroke in blue.
you can get a little white into it. Just like let it be a little bit streaky here. And the directionality of the brush also helps it feel like a feather. You can see I'm curving these lines around. Mm -hmm. Very curvy. It's really important to curve them around because that's what makes the uh, feather feel like a feather. It's okay that it's streaky for two reasons. We're going to have a lot of layers and the streaks are helping us and imply the directionality of the feathers. You see, I'll get a little white in there and just allow it to be a little streaky. Mm -hmm. Right up to that edge. As I come up to the top, I might come on the edge of my brush and just make sure that it kind of arcs out that way, keeping a nice curve and flow. You can paint the edges of your surface if you want. You've got this. First layers, right? Mm -hmm. First layers are always good layers. And you guys have been doing amazing. I've been loving seeing the paintings from the first 10 uh, in group and also hearing your experiences with the primer lessons. They've meant a lot. Um, I'm glad to know that this program has been working for everybody. I'm really proud of it. Definitely want to do more. So I'm going to come here again on the bright brush and I'm doing those S curving strokes. Just using the blue. Now we have been getting some questions from viewers about primary colors and feeling like maybe their paint line doesn't have them. Your paint line does have them. There are some rare occasions that they just don't delineate that they're primaries. Um, but I've got a whole video on how to mix primaries where we really cover what's going on and exchanges and colors that really lend themselves to the primary mixing experience. So if you're having any trouble at all finding your red, yellow, and blue, but honestly, this will work with just any of the red, yellow, and blues that you have. But if you're having any trouble at all, you want to catch that video. It will change everything. I'm going to continue making this blue go out. You can see there's a definite flow to the brush stroke. Even when I come in and I use my fan brush and I start putting in the feathers, this underpainting here, will make a huge difference. Ah. You can also just enjoy this and have a little fun with it. You know, if it's your first time painting in a while, you know, try not to be too intense with yourself. There is no, we were just talking about it the other day online, there's no pass or fail, right? You're not looking to win at art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> even though we're doing a certificate, if you do the whole course, that's just to say that you completed the journey, right? That's not a, that's not a grading system. That's to say that you made the paintings. You know, it's, you know, there are analogs to that in almost everything. You think? Sure. Like, you know, there's always someone who tries to win D and D. <laughs> you can win D and D. I don't, I don't know why you're throwing shade right now. <laughs> He's talking about me, and you can. You can absolutely win D&D. &D. And the person who isn't winning says that. But we're going to dry our canvas. If you don't know what we're referring to, it's Dungeons & Dragons, a game we grew up playing. Yeah. Um, we're going to dry our canvas, and we're going to come back. We're going to add some more layers, which are going to help ring our peacock feather to life. You've got this. You can do this. Take a deep breath. Dry your canvas. I'll see you in just a second. In the next layer, I want to put a little bit of the aqua around the center of the eye. And I'm going to use my angle brush for that. You could use your round. You could use your bright. Whatever brush you're feeling confident with. I just lack the edge and shape of the angle. And to get this color, I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to my blue. And I'm going to start the bases for a turquoise. Turquoise is a blue with a very strong green or a blue green. And when I get that, I'm going to add some white to the mix. You should be able to see the aqua. 
If it doesn't feel very turquoise or aqua, you can add a little more yellow or white as needed. And when you get the color exactly how you like it, and come up the center of the diamond. And begin the aqua band. And I'm making little just strong brush strokes. Uh, yeah, you all seem to be kind of doing it in one direction there. Yeah, one direction. I think I might have gotten a little big with my aqua there, but I can fix it in a second. Big aqua. I might have gotten a little big in the aqua. <laughs> we'll see. I've just got to make sure that it's balanced out. Peacock eyes actually have a lot of variance in size. And, uh,. That's only enough even color. I did not know that. They seem so uniform in our minds, but actually there's a lot of varietals from feather to feather. Huh. Do you know what uh, causes it? Stroke. Uh do not, man. I watch a nature show to find out, <laughs> though. They're birds. They've got, like, they are birds, right? Yeah. Yes, they are yes. birds. I'll make sure, like, you know, I don't If know. they're not birds, there's something that David Attenborough did not explain to me. They could be Velosa chickens. I'm just taking these nice little curved strokes, and I'm letting it be sort of a little bit rough, as you can see. Oh, nice there, isn't it? Yeah. First layer of turquoise. Little white into it, little yellow, little blue. Leaving that center for the dark blue. All right. Let's make that be a step because maybe you've never mixed aqua before, which again, that reminder is blue and yellow and white. You're going to want to take a little yellow to the blue, making it a blue green, and then add white, a little more yellow if you're not quite to the turquoise that you like. Take it in small steps. And then the color mix will get away from you. Let's dry this. Come back and add the next layer. So for the next part, we're going to add the dark center of the eye. And our blue is pretty dark, but it's really, if you look at this, not that dark. So to create a darker blue, I'm going to bring just a smidge of my red over to my blue being a very technical term, John. <laughs> but it's going to take it more into an indigo space. And I'm going to start to paint in this dark center of the eye. Now I find sometimes with blues, that if they're a little transparent, it can take one or two layers to get the deep coverage that's pleasing to our eye. Hmm. If you're not familiar, guys, with acrylic, you might feel frustrated um, with your painting because what you don't know is that paintings have stages and you might be in an underpainting stage where they don't quite look like themselves yet. Yeah. But they will. Give them time. Now I'm going to bring a little of my blue kind of out a bit and sort of feather it. You see that? Where I'm just letting the edge of the bristles Create an irregular line shape here. Yeah. And that's about just dragging it across. My brush isn't very wet. And my pressure that I'm putting down is very light. Are you guys liking these beginner I classes? Love it. Are they helping you figure out a bunch of those skills? Now, while I'm here, I can come back and sort of weave some of my blue back in here. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Zippering up in the center. So that's what's super fun about this. If we have any area that we want to clean up, we can definitely do that as we go. Bringing some color around here. Never underestimate the power of white. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's a little streaky though. Right. So what this will need to do is dry and cure and set so I can bring another layer over it. While I'm allowing it to do it, I can do another layer within my painting. So let's come back and add that next layer.
around our blue is generally a kind of fiery ring of golds and oranges and different colors. If I'm going to use my angle brush and I want it to be bright, I'm going to want to make sure that any brushes that I plan to use are thoroughly rinsed out of blue. Now, the first brush I'll use is my bright, and I'm using that one because I want to paint big areas pretty quickly, and sometimes a bigger brush will help you do that. I'm going to take a little yellow over to my red, and I'm taking my yellow to my red because I want a darker orange. If I wanted a lighter orange, I would take a small amount of red over to my yellow when I was mixing the color. I want to avoid this turquoise that I have here because I want it to stay bright and the blue will gray my color. Come around here. And I can still have a little bit of implied line, if you see. Mm -hmm just in the way the brush stroke is laid down and where these sort of edge, they give a darker little color in the glazing. It actually is very true to peacock feathers. So sometimes what your paint wants to naturally do is what you need it to do, which is always a convenient moment in anything we're painting. As I come around here, you can see I'm putting a little curve on the stroke. Uh -huh. And you may have noticed in our step-by-step -step photos that there's hints of pink and purple throughout here. Mm. But those layers in, those layer in a little bit later. So just breathe and know you can do this, that you've got this. You can absolutely do this painting and probably even surprise yourself. I always love it when new painters surprise themselves with what they can do. Mm, that's true. The thing to watch about is if you are a person who sets very high standards for yourself, right, which can be good, yep. but can also cause some problems because painting is not, you know, winning. We're trying to just have fun and create. So remember to be easy with yourself in the painting process and not hypercritical, Speak to yourself like you would talk to your best friend if they were painting next to you. All right. Adding those little oranges, and it can feather out a little bit, right? My canvas is well covered. I'm going to rinse this brush out thoroughly because orange and blue are going to neutralize each other or gray each other out. And so I don't want any orange pigment in my brush when I go to get another color. Let's dry this thoroughly, and I'll come back and show you the next layer of the feather. So I'm going to have some fun here, and I'm going to use my fan brush to do it. If you don't have a fan for this, you can come back with just a very dry, bright brush and a dry brush method. I have videos on that technique if you're not familiar with it. It's actually a lot of fun. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet here, my fan brush. Now, this is a hog bristle brush, which means it's made from the hair as the back of a hog, and the brush is stiff and won't separate when wet. And I have another brush here that does that as well. It's in my Art Sherpa line. That's what you're looking for in a fan brush, is one that doesn't separate on you. Now I'm going to pull a little of my yellow out from the main body of yellow and really load it into my fan. And I'm going to get a bit of my blue and make very slowly a bright yellow green. Mm. I'm going to have them get some white into it so it's a little bit streaky. A little water. You can see the load. I'm going to come here and make... The first flow of the green feathers. Isn't that pretty? That is. I come from the stem and I bend the brush stroke out so that it has a bit of a curve to it. I can come here at the center and I can come on the edge of my brush if I need to come around 
the eye of the feather. There are several layers of this, so of feather here, so you don't have to be perfect here. You just want to have this nice flowing, streaking kind of color going on in this very bright green. If you need it to be more green, you just add a little more blue to it. See that fell flowing off that peacock feather. Yeah. A little more blue in there. All right, and come around the side here. And again, little S strokes. Pulling the feather bits around the head of the peacock feather. Notice that this is a dry brush, just like I talked about with the bright. That means a lot of the surface is showing underneath. I don't have a lot of water in the fan. And so there's a very rough and textural effect created. Wow. I'm pressing a little bit firmer when I want to remove more paint from my brush onto the surface. So just have this little side here to do. Kind of starts to make the bone of the feather there, right? Mm -hmm. The quill of it really look gorgeous. Now the blue is very much complementing this bright saturated green that's on top. Need to get a little water in there and some more white on it if you can. I'm just making sure that there's a noticeable flow around the feather. Rinse your fan out very, very thoroughly. All right. And when we come back, we're going to get back into the center of our eye with a few more details. So while this is drying, I can come back in and really get the center of my peacock eye to the place that I want it. I'm going to very carefully make another deep blue. I don't want to get any of my yellow in there because I want the color to be very deep in indigo. And I'm going to come in from the outside. Look how dark that is now, that deep Ooh, blue that yeah. is. It just took a couple layers. And if you were new to painting and you didn't know it would take a couple layers, it could be really frustrating you'd be trying to fix it in that first layer where you can't fix it. You can't get that color deep in the first layer. It has to be in the dried glazing over that layer on that second layer of painting. This little rough bit's kind of coming out. Very feathery, isn't it? Yeah. Rinse out very well. The reason is, and for the next one, I don't really want any red in my brush. I'm going to wipe my brush off on a paper towel. And I'm going to make sure there's a little blue that's away from any other color. And I'm going to take some white to it. I'm taking the white to the blue because I don't want it to be a lot lighter yet. And I'm going to bring this little mix. of the pure blue and the white to the center of the dark blue eye. Look at that. Wow. And I can get a little more white. Add a few focal pots. I'm curving that brush stroke around so that even the brush stroke kind of implies the shape of that feather. I'm going to rinse that out thoroughly. So 
Let's dry it and we'll work on the yellow again. Well, we're really making the basis of a great cute peacock feather here. So let's get it back into our yellow. If we don't have enough yellow out, and I'm getting kind of low, I'm going to put a little more yellow out. And I'm going to keep it away from where the green is because I know I'll use that yellow to make a darker green. So I'm saving that little bit there for later. Now this, I'm going to come in and just go my yellow first, letting it pick up on the bit of red that was already there. Come here with my half inch angle. And I'm going to add a little bit of that deeper yellow, get some white into it here at the tip of the feather and you can see that's also layered isn't it yeah the layering is important we come here and i'm going to add a good bit of red so again we get it into a nice orange it's okay if there's little streaks of red or gold in this because peacock feathers are so colorful mm -hmm. Brush stroke kind of curves again in the way that our feathers tend to grow. About here, I might change my tactics a little bit. I might hit with just a little bit more orange. Oh. Rinse out. This is going to be real fun. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I'm going to get my red. Okay, if there's a small amount of yellow in it, but I really want it to be red. And get some white. What you're going to see here is almost like oh, it's pink. Midge of yellow. Warm pink. And let's come here. And add that little pop of pink at the bottom of the peacock feather. See, I'm curving that little brush stroke out on the line. Curving it around. Following the direction of what's going on. I can come to the outside kind of part of this. Making little shorter strokes, kind of rimming this little peacock center. Wow, this has really, really just been a nice, pleasant little feather. Just a pleasant, it's pleasant to just paint feathers, I think, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's just very pleasant to paint them. Well, I've enjoyed watching you paint it. All right. Let's dry everything. And I know we're drying everything on every layer. Don't skip the drawing. You've got a hair dryer. That's great. Um, you can use a fan, even a folded up. Remember making those folded up uh, fans, accordion fans as kids? Any of that will work to speed the acrylic painting drying process. But when it's dry and you're trying to layer dry layers on it, that's the key. Let's try it and we'll come back and we'll hit the next layer. So we're gonna add another little layer with our fan brush. I'm gonna go ahead and get it wet and I'm gonna take a lot more blue over to my yellow and I'm gonna get a deep green. You see how much darker that green is? Uh huh. It's more in our peacock green range. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is very light pressure, kind of dragging the hint of this colorful feather through the lighter green. It can be precious around the edge of the feather if I want to be. I'm bringing it back. You can see I kind of curved to go with the flow of my previous brush strokes. Yeah. I don't really want to go against them. In art, sometimes it's fun to zoom in on a subject like a feather and mm -hmm. get really close to it. 
and do a study of just it. So that's kind of what we're doing is we're doing a very up close study of the feather. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to rinse out my fan and I've got my green. I'm going to come get a little of my yellow and make that bright green again. I'm going to get some white. And here at the center of the feather, I'm going to pull down just the smallest little, look, just a little pull. Uh huh. Pull. Mm. See that green there again? Mm-hmm. This is really fun when we come back with the purple because it puts a little bit of that outer green inside the eye of the feather. Mm-hmm. For sure, this all needs to be quite dry and your brushes need to be rinsed out really well. For the next part of the painting. We're doing really good. Yeah. For convenience, I'm going to do the next part of this with my angle brush. And I'm going to get some just blue. If I need more blue, I may put out some more blue. Well, that's maybe a little more blue than I needed. Huh. But I'll just use the paint up later on another painting. It will get used. I'm going to come along here and do what I did with the fan, but in long little brush strokes. You can let a little yellow get into it. See how we're doing? Yeah. Curving it up. We're on the edge of the brush. I might let a little yellow get in there. So it's just a little bit green, but it's kind of like a deep blue green. And a long little S stroke. See, like right along here, curving it along. You can see me swing down and swing an arc up all on the edge of the brush. Working this on the right hand side. Look at me getting my right and left correct today. Wow. You see how this sort of implies those individual little quills? Uh huh. What are those little tiny pin feathers actually called, technically? Uh, pin feathers? Maybe internet. I bet you know. Down? I don't know. The internet knows. It always internet knows. When I don't know. know a thing, the internet always answers my question. In the comments down below. <laughs> With varying levels of helpfulness. I'm going to move my water cup out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to kind of make sure that as I come along here, I've got some nice, long, really individualized lines. Which kind of really creates the body. Up here, I might specifically piece out some at the head of the eye. Just so that... I'm feeling very sure of my line. All right, so this is really line practice, isn't it? Getting a lot of line work in. Yeah. Maybe come over here to this side. And we're so close up that the edges of this feather are off the canvas. Oh. So that makes it kind of nice for us as a painter. I'm adding just the smallest amount of yellow to this blue. Just so it's got the hint of the green to it. Just a hint. And it's darker, which is why we're not adding any white. Because we want it to be darker. Look at that come together. Ooh. We're nearly done. This is so cool.
I'm going to come with some like darker blue and just create some dimensionality around here. But there it is. And it has that feel and look of a peacock feather. I'm going to rinse out very thoroughly. I'm going to dry this again. I know. I've been saying it this whole lesson. Dry, 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 dry. <sighs> I guess you go. <laughs> but we're going to just make sure that it's dry. Sometimes knowing when those layers have to be wet or when those layers have to be dry is that difference between being really successful in your painting and being really frustrated in your painting. So I think it's important that I tell you so you're not uh, surprised by it at home. Dry is your friend right here. When we come back. Let's add some details, John. All right. So at this stage of a painting, there's these final little touches of people who painted with me for a while uh, really love it when I do these in eyes or different little elements where it's like, it's good, it's good, it's good. And then the little elements come together and it's like, wow. So this is your wow moment in your painting. So let's grab our half inch angle. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. All right. I'm going to bring out some red. Love red. And I'm going to get a little bit of blue and I'm going to make a purple. All right. That's a pretty dark purple, so I'm going to want that purple to show, and I'm going to add white to it to get it to show. I'll add just enough red to it until it's a purple that I really like. I'm going to come to the edge of my peacock feather. I remember I mentioned it was going to be tipped in a little bit of purple. Uh huh. This is that moment. There's the purple. It is the purple. And there's that little bit of green, right, that's trapped in the eye. Making sure I'm kind of blending it there. You can see I'm kind of a little open stroke. Rinse out. This looks close. Close, close, close. Yep. So we have a little bit of our uh, yellow and blue left, and we can keep making some really cool turquoise. I'm going to add a little bit one that's maybe a little more yellow and green. I'm a dry brush over here. See how it does? Yeah. This is just a little extra dimensionality on the painting. I'm going to take this brush and curve back the opposite way. So it's kind of like zippered. That's applying the quill that we don't see. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just add a little bit of this kind of dry brushed aqua. It's doing good. We're doing Very good. Nice. Yeah. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my white back into that pink. And dry brush a little bit of that very light pink right there. Dimensionality in that feather, right? Yeah. Dry brush a little bit back. Those layers. The dark pink underneath, it's showing. Right? It's still showing. It didn't go away. It's just layering out. Rinsing out very thoroughly. And because I don't want it to get dirty, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow over here in my white, and I'm going to make like a ducky color. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit of a brighter yellow mm -hmm. right here. Look at that. At that tip. Dry brushing. It's just a little bit of a layer. The orange is still showing through underneath. Now, this feather's very colorful. It is. Super vibrant. Now I've got all my bright colors out. I can come and get to my uh, black finally. And I'm going to go ahead and load up my angle. I'm on the edge. And just a hair into the feather. Look at that. Wow. It's a thing, isn't it? It really is. Can't really sign with any of these brushes, so I am going to have to get my round out at least to do my signature. And I'm going to go ahead and make a very, very light yellow green for that.
just so that it shows, but it doesn't take away from the whole painting when I go to sign it. Come down here at the corner. Sometimes you just have the round around to sign the painting. That's okay. Yeah. You guys, you painted a peacock feather. This is really great. I think this is going to be uh, a lot of presents for a lot of peacock lovers because there's so many of them out there. Yeah. Love peacock paintings. I have a lot of peacock paintings, but I really wanted to do this one for a while, so I'm really glad you guys joined me for it. When we come back, I'm going to tell you guys what you should do next. So I'm really hoping you enjoyed not only the result, but the experience of painting it. I highly encourage you to just really try to make your art time fun and Stay lighthearted in it, right? I think that's the most important thing in our creativity is not be very critical of ourselves and remember that this is just for joy and this is for fun and it's for creative expression. Speaking of, I'd love to see your creative expression. So if you'd like to share your finished painting with me, I've got all kinds of places online, all the social places, and you can just tag me in at the Art Sherpa or you can go into our Facebook group or you can share on our website. I'd love to see your version of the painting. If you are doing the 10 first paintings with a beginner acrylic course, I want to congratulate you on completing today. Remember, you are doing this at your own pace, so don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to go really fast. Just sit back and enjoy learning and pulling all these techniques together and these concepts that we discussed from earlier. If my talking about the beginner acrylic course has enticed you, definitely go check that out on the website. It's free. It'll be available for you all year. Now we're going to give you a peek of what the next painting is at the end of this video. So if you'd like to see what you could do next, if there's something else you'd like to paint, chances are I have it. I have 1800 step-by-step -step painting videos. So don't mm -hmm. forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button because there'll be more art lessons like this for you all year. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. So bye. It's a lot of fun.